Welcome back to Rod's Radios. The latest project here on the bench is a Bush model BS35 and this was manufactured in Dublin in the mid-50s, 1954 or 1955 approximately. It's a fine example of a radio of its time in that it has I think six valves in it plus a magic eye here on the front and it had a very good level of sensitivity at the time because it has an extra RF stage built into it. We're going to take a look at it and see what the possibility of getting this refurbished is going to be. I've no idea, I haven't looked at the inside of it yet, but let's take a closer look at the front panel. Looking at the front of this radio, you can possibly see how manky it is. It's showing a lot of sign of wear and tear. I'd say it was sitting in a shed for many, many years. The front of the grille, you can see the shadow of the loudspeaker here, and this was typical of radios of its time because the speaker cone pushing in and out would have pulled in dust and dirt over the years and you end up with this shadow of the loudspeaker on the front. I would assume the magic eye isn't working anymore because these used to wear out extremely quickly. The phosphor, the green phosphor used to disappear from the tube as it aged even after a few number of years. However the good news is that the glass on the front here is in perfect condition. The Stations that you can see listed here on the front are perfectly clear. There's no sign of chipping or paint falling off the back of them, which was common in some of these sets. The knobs are extremely manky and dirty. The wood is dirty here. There's a lot of dust and dirt here. There's paint spots on the cabinet. The wood isn't in great shape at all. I think I'm going to have to strip this wood back down to the base and uh, re-varnish it, but we'll see. Maybe nothing of this will be done if the radio itself isn't feasible to get up and running, but it would be nice to get this refurbished. It's a, a fine radio for its time and I'd hate to see it dumped. So let's have a look around the back and see what awaits us here. So around the back of the set we can see the uh, model number here, the BS35 uh, receiver, and down at the bottom it says Bush Radio, Ireland. And over here on the left there is a socket for a pickup gramophone and sockets here for an aerial and an earth because of course these radios always needed some sort of wire uh, plugged into the back to get any sort of decent reception from stations far away. The serial number is kind of not really visible but I'm sure it's on a label on the back under here and the mains cord comes out through here. Up on the top right hand side there's a, a socket for an external loudspeaker. So let's get the back off and see what happens. Uh, I can see through the, the holes here, this set is extremely dusty. Wow, is this dusty or is this dusty? Look at this. This has been a haven for spiders over the years. <laughs> There's loads of cobwebs in here and a film or at least a carpet of dust sitting on the top of the chassis. So the first thing I think to do here is to clean this up uh, with a vacuum cleaner and uh, take the chassis out and have a closer look. Some of the wiring I can see at the back here has degraded in that the insulation has come off and I can see it's crumbled off here and I can see the bare wires underneath so some of the wiring will need to be replaced as well. So let's see how this goes. Hopefully it'll look a little bit better when it's cleaned up. With the chassis out and uh, somewhat cleaner than before, I can now start to test this set and see if it works. I have it wired into the workshop speaker and the mains plugged in via the dim bulb and the variac. However, when switched on and brought the voltage up slowly, no response and no current drawn. So the first thing was to measure uh, continuity across the switch. And indeed this was showing no results via either of the contact pairs. So, out with the switch, stroke volume control, to see if it was possible to repair it. Now, I separated the volume control section from the switch and flushed the switch part itself with contact cleaner. I tried this several times between actuating the switch itself, but to no avail. The only solution was to replace it with a similar one. Uh, this is a 500k log track with double pole switch that I'd salvaged from another old set that was unrepairable. And here it is fitted in place. I then checked continuity across the output of the switch 
and this measured 35 ohms, which seemed about right. Having fitted the new uh, volume control stroke on off switch, it was time to fire this yoke up. But just before I did that, I checked the main transformer to see that there was continuity there. And there is okay, so that appears to be okay. The readings looked fine. So when I switched it on, there was absolutely nothing, apart from the fact that the valves were lighting up. So that was an indication that the heater chain is working. So that was something anyway, but other than that, no sound whatsoever. I went over here to the output transformer, I should say, that's sitting here on the bench and checked both the primary and the secondary. The secondary seemed to be fine with a very low ohm reading. However, the primary is reading very high, up around 200k ohms, which seems to be way off the mark. So I'm just going to disconnect the wires from the secondary side and uh, check the continuity again. And with the ohm meter connected to the primary side of the output transformer, indeed it confirms my fear that this thing is open circuit. A dud transformer. Where do we go from here? Well, what we do is we go to the transformer box and see what's in here. And I knew one of these would come in handy one of these days, and maybe today is the day. So I have an assortment of various transformers. I'll dig out one that might be suitable for this. With the replacement output transformer wired in and some new wiring added to uh, replace the stuff that was rotting away, it was time to check whether this was going to have any effect. And indeed it did, because when I turned it on, as you can hear, we have some noise, we have some volume. We can even hear a station. Now this happens to be on one of the shortwave bands and when I try the normal AM bands I'm still getting something there although not very much. However, long wave that I would expect to be the most useful with our local station here is completely quiet. However, this gives me some hope that we can get this thing going again. I think the next thing to do is to recap or replace the capacitors in the chassis because most of them are these waxy capacitors that are normally dead, leaky or just bad, gone out of value over such a long period of time because don't forget this is from the 1950s so it's nearly 70 years old at this stage. The other thing I need to do is to retension the string on the dial drive pointers were way out of kilter, they're in the wrong position here and the string is very loose so I'm going to try and tighten it up by uh, shortening the string at this point here to put a bit of tension on the on the spring. So let's go ahead and start doing this. I won't bore you with the uh, replacement of the capacitors but you can see the result of what has been done here. These orange drop capaci uh, capacitors are the new ones obviously and they replace some of the old uh, waxy capacitors. Uh, there's one electrolytic capacitor that I did replace and I had to leave the other one in place because I couldn't get at it. Likewise, there's a wax capacitor buried right down in the bottom of the chassis here that was impossible to remove. So it was a matter of just snipping off the leads and tagging the new one onto the wires that were left behind. Other than that, the main HT capacitor that you can see here was absolutely in perfect condition, no hum whatsoever resulting from its uh, age. So that one was left in place. And over here you can see the result of the recapping. These are all the old waxy capacitors that were removed. This is one of the capacitors I've removed from the chassis as part of the recapping. And this is just to show you how leaky some of these capacitors can be. It's called a waxy capacitor because it's covered in this kind of wax material. It's uh, 0.05 microfarad and I'm connecting it up to the leakage detector that I made here. And I can crank up the voltage across this capacitor initially say up to 100 volts and start turning on the leakage detector. So at 500 milliamps there's no leakage, 50 milliamps no leakage, 5 milliamps it's showing deflection. 
So it's measuring about half a milliamp here. But as I turn the voltage up to what its working voltage would be, 150 volts, 200 volts, 250 volts, you can see that the leakage is now measuring on the 5 milliamp scale up at over 2 milliamps. Now, a capacitor working under these conditions should be at zero. So it just shows you how leaky this capacitor is after, what, 70 years in the set? Let's turn it off before I get a shock. While I was waiting for the inspiration to continue the electronic side of things, I decided to attack the cabinet. And here we see a fine example of Spiderus Minimus, trapped inside, but now allowed to escape to the wide, wide world. With the chassis already out of the cabinet, I started to deconstruct the various bits left inside it. Now the cabinet itself was cracked in two places. So this was glued and clamped, then left overnight to set. Now it was time to strip the old varnish and dirt off the cabinet. And it was painted with a non-toxic stripper for this purpose. Two sessions of this, along with removal by stainless steel scouring pads, had the cabinet looking good already. After which it was sanded in preparation for re-varnishing. Now this turned out less than perfect as in particular the top had damage from damp staining which was impossible to remove by sanding down as the veneer in this area was paper thin and I was afraid of exposing the plywood surface underneath. However, it was a big improvement on the original state. While the varnish was setting, I turned my attention to the deconstructed parts from the cabinet and started the cleaning process here. The knobs were scrubbed in the sink, the metal grill was resprayed with a champagne gold colour and the back plate from the dial repainted a white. Some of the knobs had lost the inlaid digits so these were painted over in matte black paint and sanded back to reveal the lettering renewed. Time now to reconstruct the cabinet and here it is ready to reinstall the chassis when this part is ready. At this point, I think I'll tail off this part of the restoration stroke repair. In the next part, I'll finish off the work on the chassis. Hopefully I'll be able to get there with the long wave problem. This is going to be a little bit tricky because I don't have a circuit diagram for this radio, but I'll do my best. Having done that, I'll consider putting in a Bluetooth unit into it, which will make the radio a lot more usable. And at that stage, I'll pop it back into the cabinet, ship it back to the customer who I hope will be happy with the result. So if you have been, thanks for watching and join me in the next section.